Hi, welcome to DIY Video Equipment, and this is the next episode, How to Build Your Own Jib Crane. Let's just get right to it. One of the things you're going to need to get is one and a half inch by one and a half inch, eighth inch um, square aluminum tubing. Now you want to try to keep this as light as possible, and I've actually purchased this I'm, I think when I purchased it, it was in an eight foot section, uh, and then I cut it down to four feet. The reason why I cut it down to four feet is that I wanted to um, be able to transport it in the eight foot length that gets a little bit um, heavy. The other thing that you're going to see right here, uh, these are 12 inch, or actually this one here is 11 and three quarters um, by an inch and a half by an eighth inch wide aluminum. Uh, plating. You can see all of the the bolts that have screwed in there and right here where the two come together um, that's the splicing. Now I am going to go to a larger uh, so I'm going to add another four feet to that but once I add that um, I'll just be able to splice on another one of these pieces. Now are there, there are two rows top and bottom. You can go to your local metal store. You won't find this at Lowe's or Home Depot or any place like that but just go to your local uh, metal supplier and they should be able to supply that or get it in for you. The next little piece that we really want to talk about uh, are how, how these ends are made. And what you're going to see is uh, these are also aluminum. These are two and a half by two and a half angle aluminum. And what I've ended up doing was uh, taking two pieces, top and bottom, and bolted those through and so this then allows for this straight plate here and then I've taken another two by two or two and a half by two and a half aluminum and bolted those two together now I've used kind of a hex and a locking nut back here um, by putting that plate there and then it also allows for me to put on this handle um, that actually does two things it works as a handle and also uh, to hold the weights. And as you can see from up underneath here, I've just got some lock washers or lock nuts um, to hold this piece of galvanized pipe. Uh, that is about um, 18 inches. And what, what you'll end up doing is setting your, your weights up against here and it'll allow for um, a good handle. Now I'm gonna go travel all the way down here to the other end and it's the same type of configuration too. We've got the two and a half by two and a half bolted through. And then for this one, we've done two things. One, I've done the same thing here. Uh, I did round off these corners and then also rounded them off on the other side too and attached those bolts. Now the one thing that I did do, you see this nut here, is underneath, um, I've got this uh, door stopper and that allows when the uh, unit comes down onto the ground it gives us something a little rubber to to um, uh, stop it with. The other part is you're going to need a head for your camera. Uh, this one here just happens to be that I pulled off from a, a, a tripod that I wasn't using and I just took a screw underneath that and bolted that on. Travel down here to this other part and this is probably the most difficult one because the other ones are just bolted. And I do want to tell you that there are thrust bearings that go right in here. Thrust bearings, I'll put a picture up, um, show you what they are. They're little bearings that, uh, they're almost kind of like washer bearings that set in there. This has uh, got to be one of the more difficult pieces. I had the metal, and this is all steel here, but I had the metal company um, take and cut a piece of eight by eight steel. And I actually did two pieces. Uh, and the reason why I did two pieces, because this is how I first had this set up. I used one of these lazy Susans to, to sit underneath. You can see some of the holes that were drilled in there. I really didn't like how, how the unit was unstable. So um, my second round or version 2.0, I took that off. But uh, with the bar, I took and tapped, uh, drilled into the steel, tapped um, a few um, holes, and then took um, an Allen wrench um, bolt and bolted those uh, inside there. And that gives me some firm 
a firm base to put on the um, top of of the video display. And um, I've got an air compressor and a grinding wheel and I took and just cut off the corners and then smoothed that around to make it circular. It really doesn't need to be any, it doesn't need to be circular, it actually can be smaller than that uh, if you use the new methodology. Uh, the other piece, there's two in this tower and I did weld. I, this is the only welding part on here. You need to make sure that 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 is cut very straight and this is um, one and a half inch by um, three quarter inch steel and it's hollow steel and I did find some little plate steel that I took and um, put on top and welded that and then trimmed it off really nice painted it black uh, you do have to make it so that it is the width of these two pieces here you can kind of see the thrust bearing down in there uh, but then that's what allows it to move up and down. So I'm going to go ahead and set this down. This unit is actually finished uh, with the exception of, and once we get it all together, I'll actually show you. Um, but another piece that you're going to need, uh, this is a three-quarter inch, and as I measure this, it is four and a half inches. Um, this is just a bolt, and this is what bolts the piece down onto uh, it's staff that it rides on. We'll talk a little bit more about that. But first, let's kind of go down here. This is finished. Let's go down and take a look at how we move the thing around and get it to where it needs to go. Okay, what you're looking at as I flip this off to the, to the side here is nothing more than a regular dolly. Um, this dolly, uh, purchased it, uh, you can purchase it at, at Lowe's or Home Depot. Uh, and it, uh, I think the total cost on it was maybe $59, $69, and it can still be used as a, um, a, a, a dolly from this standpoint. You are going to see four wheels. Now, if I tilt this up a little further, you're going to see these roller wheels here that allow it to steer. One of the things that I do is if I'm taking this to a, to a, a shoot, normally I have a long distance, and you can't turn it. And so what I'll do is I'll keep these wheels on, and then once I get into a location, I'll take those off, and, and then it'll allow it to go straight. Now, you can see that these are the standard wheels that come on with this, and these treads here are pretty, pretty flat. These are kind of ribbed and actually sit up on, its, on itself. I will end up buying some different wheels. I think I went to like a Harbor Freight, and you can go um, online and look at a Harbor Freight. And I think they're like five dollars a piece. That's why I went and bought them. Um, but I probably need to go spend some more so that it'll have be nice and smooth. But once I have the jib, I don't move it back and forth. It's really more to get to some place. Still getting back to using this again, I've taken a rod, a steel rod, and I've um, bolted it on using U-bolts. And that allows me to take this part on and off. And as you've seen from some of the other episodes, that I've always got to take this back to the original, so I've got to take it back to using it as, as a dolly. But it does work as a real nice dolly um, uh, with even the platform on it. Now the platform is a little different story. I actually went out and I purchased um, a good piece of wood. Uh, this is actually, um, I'm not sure how many, well there's about six ply, and it's finished off with um, a poplar. Very smooth. You could actually get a piece of, um, of just plywood, but I, I wanted it to stay consistent and I wanted it to stay stay um, uh, so that I could always use it and it wouldn't warp on me. Now this is a 2 foot wide, 24 inches by 36 inch. I think you buy it a little bit bigger and cut it down and cut it, uh, it's normally 4. And what I've done is uh, right in here I was able just to sink bolts in into a steel plate, but then here um, I actually had to put a U-bolt in and countersink on the top. Now countersinking on the top um, allowed me then to put this, this um, piece of carpet over. And this piece of carpet was um, a couple dollars, maybe five dollars. 